Hey everyone, Fabio Nilla here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. In this video, I'm going to talk about my top 10 favorite Halloween Horror Nights facades. Put yourself in this situation. You're waiting in line for a Halloween Horror Nights maze. You're getting excited, you're getting pumped up, and the first thing you see is the entrance, aka facade. Now the facade is very much like a book cover. You very much judge it. People say otherwise, but no, you judge the book by the cover. There, there's no way. Now, the facade for the most part, its job is to give the audience exactly what they're getting themselves into. Is the house going to be very intense and very spooky or is it going to be more on the fun, lighthearted side? It is very much a first impressions kind of thing. So a facade really does make or break a uh, guest's expectations for a certain Halloween Horror Nights house. So again, this video is going to be all about facades and I'm going to talk about the 10 facades that I believe are some of the best that Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood had to offer. So let's not waste any more time. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Now before we get into the nitty gritty, I want to talk about my honorable mentions. These didn't quite make my top 10, but these facades are just way too cool to like not talk about. The Walking Dead. Say what you want about The Walking Dead and Horror Nights, but you can't lie, the facades that they made for the mazes were really cool and very faithful to the show. They were very big as well. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I'm a huge fan of the movie, so seeing the big circus tent in person was really cool, and Farmer Gene getting electrocuted looking for Pooh Bear was a nice touch. Poltergeist. It's pretty much the house from the movie, but I don't know, there's just something about this facade that gave me the impression that like, wow, like they really paid attention to the details, they're really going all out with this house. Us. The facade itself was really cool, but what really made it for me was the sound design. I just heard ocean waves in the background, so it gave you the impression that you were really in Santa Cruz. And then you have like the music from the movie and then like uh, Red's monologue from the movie as well, and I thought it was just really cool. And finally, Creep Show. Just a basic comic book looking facade, but like it's just so simple and just like straight to the point and I just love it. And like I'm a huge fan of the movie too, so that's a little bit of bias there. Kicking this list off is my number 10, which is The Bride of Frankenstein Lives from Halloween Horror Nights 2021. Halloween Horror Nights in 2021 was just an abysmal event. Like it was just like a shell of like what it really is and I was very disappointed with the event overall. But the only good redeeming quality about that whole event in general was the Bride of Frankenstein Lives house. I remember seeing all the construction videos and pictures from that year and the only facade that caught my eye was the Bride of Frankenstein one. And when I went to the actual event and saw it under proper show lighting and music, I thought like, wow, like this is where all the budget went to. It's very similar to the creep show facade, but the thing is the creep show facade felt like a big box. Whereas this one felt like an actual book with like actual three dimensional depth. So yeah, nice facade. I love it. For my number nine, I'm going to take it all the way back to 2014, American Werewolf in London. Now there may be a little bias here since 2014 was my first year attending Horror Nights and I do love American Werewolf in London. It's a simple facade, it's just a slaughtered lamb, but wow, it's just something about it that just hit different. You know, when I went up to the entrance and I saw it for the first time, I thought like, wow, like we're really going to step into the movie. And then of course you have Blue Moon playing in the background and I, you also hear ramblings of British people saying, keep clear of the moors, stay on the road, beware the moon. And I thought, wow, like this is really cool. I got super giddy and excited after hearing all that. I do wish they would have incorporated the full moon somehow, you know, just have like a cardboard cutout of the moon, like by the top of the facade. But I think it would have looked too cheesy if they did do that. But yeah, American Werewolf at my number nine. Number 8. Dating all the way back to 2015, Halloween, Michael Myers Comes Home. The facade was the classic Myers house, but it was in the 1978 version, meaning it's all old and decrepit. But if you take that facade and mix it in with the show lighting and the music and everything, it just really makes the facade pop and it's really cool, especially if you're a big Halloween fan. But I can't lie, looking at the pictures and all the details and stuff, all the close-ups, you can tell that like it's not that faithful to the movie it doesn't look that much like the Myers house like it's missing a whole roof and the house itself looks too square as opposed to like the movie where it's more like rectangular but uh, those are just like minor little nitpicks but I will say this that little projection with Judith Myers getting stabbed in the window was a nice detail so yeah Halloween number eight my pick for number seven is gonna be Trick or Treat from 2018. Now I was very curious to see what the facade for Trick or Treat would be considering it's like a anthology movie where it's a bunch of tales in one movie. I thought oh god they're gonna do like another facade where it's like a box with a bunch of cardboard cutouts of like different characters of the movie like similar to American Horror Story. But they actually built the house from the opening sequence which I thought was really cool. 
and they really went all out with the decor on that one with you know with the ghosts and the lights and like the, even the little plastic severed foot from the little tree from the movie which i thought was really a cool detail and i love how the facade blends seamlessly with the opening sequence of the actual maze i thought it was that was really cool and also the facade during the nighttime looks so pretty with the lights it gives off like classic halloween vibes exactly like the movie so yeah trick or treat at lucky number seven number six is gonna be freddy versus jason from 2016. now if you guys remember the maze was loosely based off of the actual movie they took a lot of like creative liberties with the maze which i thought was really cool so i had no idea what to expect with the facade and what the facade was was the boiler like factory that like uh freddy krueger worked in like the actual look of the boiler factory is pretty cool but what really made it for me was the tribute to wes craven now at first glance this seems like one big tribute to the nightmare on elm street series but jason does get a little bit of love in the facade in the corner you see a bunch of trees but it's lit up to reveal jason Voorhees himself it's almost as if he's depicted as a looming threat to Freddy Krueger, which I thought was really cool. This whole facade is just only one of the many reasons on why Freddy vs. Jason the Maze was so awesome. Number 5. We're now at the halfway point. My number 5 is going to be The Exorcist from 2016. When creating The Exorcist Maze, the creative team set out their way to make a live recreation of the iconic movie poster. And in my opinion, they did a really good job. They could have easily done just the house. But no, they really went all out with this one. They added like, you know, the fog. They added the green lights coming out of the window. They even added a statue of the priest just looking right in front of the maze. It's just really awesome. But what really ties everything together, in my opinion, is the audio. Not only do you have the iconic music playing in the background, but you also hear like lines of dialogue from the film, you know, just to give you the impression that like, wow, like this house is no joke. This really is The Exorcist. All that is why it's sitting very comfortably right in the middle of the list. My number 4 is the most recent entry in this list, and that's 2022's Scarecrow the Reaping. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the facade is supposed to set the mood and give the guests an idea of what exactly they're walking into. And in my honest opinion, the facade that does that job the best is the Scarecrow facade. It shows the audience the tone of the house, the time period that it's set in, the overall theme of the house, you know, there's a little bit of foreshadowing with the actual Scarecrow right next to it. And the detailing is honestly quite stunning with the vines and like the stalks of corn and everything. You can tell the creative team really made an effort to make this world that they built feel very authentic and very lived in. There's not really much that I would change about this facade. The only reason why it's at number 4 is that the top 3 are just slightly better than this one. Now before we get into my top 3, I want to talk about some dishonorable mentions because while there are a couple of banger facades we can't lie, there are a couple of stinkers as well, and they're pretty lame ones too. The Haunting of Hill House, literally a giant rectangle of cardboard with the logo, the Netflix logo, and the picture of the house. Yeah, very immersive, very cool, like I really feel like I'm in the world of Hill House, wow, very impressive. Also, we can't forget about the American Horror Story facade, literally just a box with spooky wallpaper and a bunch of curtains and a TV screen playing the intros and a bunch of cardboard cutouts. Now I mean I understand they didn't want to do the murder house facade or like the freak show facade because they want all three seasons to be represented, I get it. But to do it again in 2017 when they were only covering one season, the Roanoke season? Yeah no, you're out of excuses at that point, like that that ain't it chief, uh uh. There was also Crimson Peak back in 2015. They could have easily done the castle, like the castle facade is actually inside of the maze. But I don't know why they didn't have that as the main entrance. The facade itself just gave off like cringy, like synergy vibes. Like, oh, hey, this is Crimson Peak. You see the sign that says Crimson Peak? You're going to enter into Crimson Peak. Check out our movie Crimson Peak and IMAX. And finally, The First Purge. I have no idea what I'm looking at here. Like, I honestly don't know. It looks like a bunch of like storefronts, but it looks like so cut off. I just see a bunch of rectangles with signs. And there was like pieces of trash all over the floor like I, I, it got, I was so confused like what like really yeah that's trash on the floor like yeah that's very attractive but yeah those are my dishonorable mentions now let's get back to the top three number three my number three is gonna be la llorona i feel like out of all of the horror nights mazes that john murdy and his team have ever done i feel like no other maze has been as impactful as la llorona a lot of people's introduction to la llorona in general was the horror nights mazes I feel like that wouldn't even be so if the first maze ended up being such a flop, but thankfully it wasn't a flop, it was very iconic. And I think there are a number of reasons as to why La Llorona the maze stuck with so many people. 
and I feel like one of the big ones is the facade. The church that has the look of a sad, unsettling face, that imagery is just way too iconic. You show that facade to any HHN fan of any generation and they go, oh, it's La Llorona. That just goes to show how unforgettable the imagery is. So yeah, La Llorona and number three, just from the impact alone. Numero dos. My number two is gonna be 2019's Ghostbusters. For some odd reason, I just had a gut feeling that they weren't gonna do the firehouse as the facade. They, I thought to myself like, there was no way they're gonna do that. That's just way too big of a building. It would be impossible. Well, they did the impossible. I mean, of course they had to scale it down, but honestly, it doesn't look that scaled down. It's honestly quite impressive. The fact that they were able to pull this off, that's what makes this facade an all-timer for me. The only thing that's preventing it from being number one is that the Ecto-1 is a cardboard cutout and not an actual car, which is kind of a bummer. But at least the taxi driver goes as a nice touch. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. My number one pick for the top 10 facade list. What is the facade that I believe is the best that HHN Hollywood has ever made? Drum roll, please. It is none other than Krampus from 2016. Yes, in my eyes, Krampus is the one that has the best facade out of all the mazes that I've ever been through. Now you guys are probably thinking, what, really? Krampus? That one maze based off of that one universal horror movie where it's like a dark Christmas? But no, if you go back and watch some like POV videos and YouTube, you'll see for yourself like how good the facade really is. I mean, just look at this thing. It's so beautiful. Every single aspect about this facade works so well and it all comes together very beautifully. The abundance of snow, the icicles, the Christmas lights, the snowmen. They even had show lighting replicating snowfall. You even had a frozen delivery guy, you know, just shivering with icicles coming out of his beard, just giving everyone goodies. It's so awesome. And of course, you have the main star himself, Krampus, up on the roof. Everything about this facade works so well. And that's why it's my favorite facade of all time. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my top 10 favorite facades. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click the like button. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button. I want to try to give you guys as much coverage from the event as possible, whether it be construction videos or just regular speculation update videos or maybe more top 10 content like this, you know, just to fill in that empty void from the lack of announcements. If you guys stick around to the very end of the video, thank you so much for watching, and until then, see you all in the fog.